In this lesson, we're going to use this postulate to prove the converses of all the theorems introduced in the previous lesson. And this postulate is known as the parallel postulate, stated, through a point not on a line, there is exactly one line parallel to the given line. And we introduce theorem 37. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of alternate interior angles are congruent. And that's the converse of the theorem that states that if two lines are cut by a transversal such that a pair of alternate and interior angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. Well, let's start with our proof, and we're going to use indirect proof again. We're given that two lines, lines A and B, are parallel. And we're going to prove that angles 1 and 2 are congruent, and you can see they form a pair of alternate interior angles. Well, since we're using indirect proof, we'll start by assuming the opposite of what we're trying to prove. We're going to assume that angle 1 is not congruent to angle 2. And then we could find another line that passes through P that does form an angle that is congruent to angle 2. Since lines A and B were given as parallel, and line C is parallel by alternate interior angles, we have contradicted the parallel postulate, because we have two lines passing through the same point that are both parallel to a third line, and the parallel postulate says that there can only be one. And Because of that contradiction, our assumption is false, and angle 1 must be congruent to angle 2. If lines A and B are given as parallel, we can use alternate interior angles, vertical angles, supplementary angles, linear pairs, and substitution to prove that any pair of the eight angles formed are either congruent or supplementary. We start by labeling a pair of alternate interior angles. And we've just proven that if the lines are parallel, the two alternate interior angles are congruent. Now we add angles 3 and 4. Angle 3 is a vertical angle of angle 1, and angle 4 is a vertical angle of angle 2. And then by substitution, we know that all four of those labeled angles are congruent. And then angle 8 is supplementary to angle 3 because the two angles form a linear pair. Angle 7 is congruent to angle 8 because of vertical angles. Angle 7 and 6 are congruent because they're alternate interior angles. And finally, angle 6 is congruent to angle 5 because the two angles are vertical angles. That brings us to theorem 38. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then any pair of angles formed are either congruent or supplementary. So we label our first angle as having a measure of n degrees, and then because of vertical angles, the next labeled angle also has a measure of n degrees. And those two angles each form a linear pair with one of the two angles labeled as n degrees. What we know about linear pairs is that they're supplementary, and the definition of supplementary is that the two add up to 180 degrees. So if one is n degrees, the other is 180 minus n degrees. And then you can either think of it as alternate interior angles or corresponding angles, but that allows us to label the next two angles shown, and then by vertical angles, we can label our bottom two angles, and now we've shown that four of the angles are 180 minus n degrees, and the other four are n degrees. In this situation where we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And here's theorem 39. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of alternate exterior angles are congruent. Here's one pair, both n degrees in measure. And there's the other pair, both 180 minus n degrees in measure. Theorem 40. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of corresponding angles are congruent. There's our first pair of corresponding angles. They're each n degrees. There's a pair that are each 180 minus n degrees. There's another pair that are each n degrees. And finally, our fourth pair, 180 minus n degrees each. Theorem 41. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. The marked gray angle is supplementary to the marked blue angle, and the marked red angle is supplementary to the marked black angle. And then theorem 42. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of exterior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. There's a blue with a gray and a red with a black. 
Theorem 43. In a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it is perpendicular to the other. We have a short proof. We're given that line A is parallel to line B, and that line T, the transversal, is perpendicular to line A, and our job is to prove that the transversal is also perpendicular to line B. Well, we know that line T serves as a transversal for the parallel lines A and B. And angles 2 and 3 must be congruent by corresponding angles. And since angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, it must be a right angle. So T is perpendicular to B by definition of perpendicular lines. And finally, theorem 44, the transitive property of parallel lines. If two lines are parallel to a third line, they are parallel to each other. We'll state the given, A is parallel to B, and B is parallel to C, and we're to prove that A is parallel to C. And we'll start the proof by drawing a transversal, line T, shown in red. And we know that angles 1 and 2 are congruent because they're alternate interior angles. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 by vertical angles. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 by alternate interior angles. And then by substitution, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, and they form a pair of alternate interior angles relative to lines A and C, and therefore line A is parallel to line C by alternate interior angles. We use the two words alternate interior to represent both the theorem that a pair of lines cut by a transversal with congruent alternate interior angles is parallel, and the converse of that theorem, that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of alternate interior angles are congruent. In this lesson, we looked at the parallel postulate. Through a point not on a line, there is exactly one line parallel to a given line. Theorem 37, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of alternate interior angles are congruent. Theorem 38, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then any pair of angles formed are either congruent or supplementary. Theorem 39, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of alternate exterior angles are congruent. Theorem 40, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of corresponding angles are congruent. Theorem 41, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. Theorem 42, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of exterior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. Theorem 43, in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it is perpendicular to the other. And finally, theorem 44, the transitive property of parallel lines, if two lines are parallel to a third line, they are parallel to each other.